Today, we're going to be looking at some of the ugliest and worst web design trends of the last 20 years. Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're stepping into the world of UI UX design and I've been designing since probably 96 or 97 as a young teenager. So I've seen it all and I've done it all as well. So this list of 10 things, you know, it could easily be, be 20, 30, 40, 50 things, but it's just the 10 things that came up when I really sat down to think about it for about 30 minutes. And it's, it's isn't to pick on the people who did this because you know what? I did most of these things. We all did. And it's interesting seeing, it's interesting to see how the industry, the design industry has matured since then. But I guarantee you 20 years from now in 2040, we're going to look at back on some of the stuff we're doing today because I have some things that are recent in this list. And we're going to be wondering the same stuff. Like I'm wondering, why did we did th do that like 20 years ago? So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. One second before we begin, the sponsor of this video is Scrimba. Now, in case you've been living under a rock, Scrimba.com is an interactive learning platform for coders. They have recently launched their front-end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more, as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content, there are hundreds of interactive coding challenges, and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front-end developer. So check out the first link in the description below to get 50% off. Yes, I am a floating head. Let's just get that right out there because I know everybody's going to comment on it. It's this green shirt. This is how green screens work, and I just randomly wear green shirts. It's not on purpose. Anyhow, so the very first one we're going to get to, busy background. So what do I mean by that? Well, in the late 90s, we had a lot of crazy backgrounds on websites. So even like real popular famous websites, like first the movie Space Jam, I high contrast, busy, repeating backgrounds. And many times they were animated GIF backgrounds. So this is a bad UX issue, of course, I just because it, it, it takes attention away from the core focus, but it was still a thing that even professional designers back there, back then did on their sites and look at like this is Pepsi's and this is a splash page too which is another on my list in terms of you know bad trends that we used to do I uh, where it just clicks this enter you have to click enter to enter it but look at this background I mean it is the most distracting thing you've ever seen and just for proof now this is back in 1996 by the way just for proof that coke is better than Pepsi this was coke's website back then so so much better I mean just look at Pepsi what were they thinking Next up, tiny text. For some reason in the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, really small text was exciting. Um, it was a thing, it was a trend. Um, this is Two Advanced Studios. Now I'm not sure if any of you uh, remember Two Advanced, some of you will. Uh, if you were back then and you were into web design and all that stuff, you knew who they were because they were basically the top of their game, Eric Jordan, the founder of Two Advanced. Uh, they created the best Flash websites back then, and they had a certain aesthetic that they kind of introduced, uh, which involved a lot of like just tiny text. Like, look at the text over here. These are all like little tiny blips of text that you can't read, and it was just a certain design of this aesthetic that really, I uh, you know, it didn't didn't serve a purpose. It just it makes it look interesting. Um, people took this, and you know, they 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 really ran with it with when it came to all the tiny text. Uh, that was kind of hard to read back then. Um, three, splash pages. All right, so what is a splash page? You know, it's just it's basically like click here to enter. It's like that Pepsi example. Um, and this is a bad for UX, of course, because you don't want people to have to unnecessarily click this button just to get to the main site. But this is something that we thought was a good idea to do, so we did it often. In fact, here's one of mine. This is from the early 2000s. I, again, this is the tiny text thing that you know I thought was cool. Uh, and then it just, there wasn't even enter now button. It was just assumed that your person would click on this background to get to my main website. Completely stupid. Four, hit counters. Now this, I'm going to defend hit counters a little bit. Um, hit counters, especially in this day and age, you, I, why would you do that? Back then, I, I thought about after I added this, I realized there we didn't really have access or most most people who had websites didn't have access or didn't know how to integrate any type of like analytic solution to figure out how many website visitors you had. So what people would do is they would put these hit counters and a lot of times they were ugly, you know, I mean these are these these are but ugly. Um in, in order just to to figure out 
how many website visitors landed on your page. I mean, this is how we did it. We didn't have Google Analytics and all that stuff back then. Um, so it, it's one of those things I, I can kind of forgive now that I think about it, but this is what hit counters look like. Number five, borders, borders. This is from like 1998 right here, girl pages. I uh, Borders and things being encased in containers all over the place, uh, that was a really big trend. Um, what is this? Dungeons and Dragons official website. I, I think this is like 2004. Everything is encased in a border. Um, fortunately, the, the design trend, I mean, the, the design industry got away from this, uh, but it took a long time. Uh, I mean, this is GoDaddy back in 2004. And just look at all the borders and how cluttered things were uh, massively. Number six, cheesy effects. When I say effects, I mean like Photoshop effects. I this is actually not that bad of a design for for when it, this was created. Uh, this looks like it was probably created in the early 2000s for sure. Um, now what I mean by effects, I'm talking about like the emboss effects, which you know these are all designed pretty much in Adobe Photoshop back then. Um, we also have uh, inner shadows on the buttons right here. We have a lot of small text. No white space this is this is another thing i didn't include on the list but if you look at a lot of these examples like when it comes to like putting paragraphs in containers there's no white space at all i don't know why we thought that was a good idea um but yeah as you can see we have the gloss effects and and just a lot of stuff this next one is actually pretty cool looking i uh, i wanted to, to i wanted to mention this specifically as we've progressed I, as an in industry and we've matured, we've been forced to not be able to be as creative in our design. And that's because of responsive design. I, we have all these different size devices from tiny phones all the way up to massive 4K monitors. And because of that, we have to create these responsive adaptive uh, layouts that kind of constrict your ability to make them fluid like this one how would you make this responsive that would be kind of tough to do um and so back then we only had one screen size basically a couple resolutions to design for and that was for on laptops and that was for desktops and so we were able to just run wild and create stuff like this this one again i'm not saying it's bad i'm just showing that there was a big emphasis back then for a lot of sites to really use gloss, glows, gradients, 3D, uh, and all this stuff. Uh, and it was overused to a large extent. This one, I think, is a good design uh, for back in the time. But, but this one, like these buttons, yeah, complete late 90s, mid 90s even, uh, Photoshop sort of gloss buttons, adding every single type of... Uh, you know, effect on top of them. Um, number seven, Web 2.0. Web 2.0 got popular around like 2009 or so, uh, 2010. And what really defined it primarily was gloss and gradients. Um, but also uh, there was a positive thing with it though. And that was um, simplification. All right. So here's an example. It's like the first, if you go to images.google and you type in Web 2.0 designs or whatever, this is like the first one that always shows up. Um, Notice the subtle gradient. These aren't bad. I mean, these aren't bad in terms of UI design fundamentals, um, but everybody was doing this. Like I was doing this. You put a, a, a very subtle gradient on your containers and you would like a lot of th times, like for the nav area where you could see uh, each element is split here with these little dividers. That was very popular. Subtle drop shadows, again, subtle gradients. The one pixel inset white border right here, very, very, very typical. Here's another example. You see it's very similar to the other one. Uh, here's another one, it's kind of really pixelated though, but a lot of gradients overall um, during the Web 2.0 era. Blob, so let's fast forward to like 2016, 2017, 2018 or so. Blob design, now, we already have blob generators. We see this still, even today, we see a lot of blobs out there. And I'm not saying that they're all bad, but I'm saying it's it's a trend. It's gonna come and go. And with all trends, you have individuals who overuse them and they don't know how to use them correctly. 
I, and what I mean by that is like some people will do blobs by hand, maybe in Photoshop, and they'll come out and looking all weird and ragged and not good. Uh, so that's one of those things I think we're going to get away from. Um, like even this one over here, it's like kind of not nice and smooth like it is over here. So I uh, just want to, one of those things I think uh, is a trend. It's not horrible. It's not a horrible trend, but I think it's one of those things that will definitely come and go. Um, and we'll look back at it kind of like how we do with like all the crazy effects from in the early 2000s. Number nine, particle backgrounds. I used to see this so much last year and the year before. And what I'm talking about are these animated uh, JavaScript sort of particle effect backgrounds. So I think it, it became real popular among cryptocurrency websites because you know the whole blockchain interconnectivity and all that. But I see a lot of people, tons of people. It, it, I, usually when I do my live streams, I'll see at least one person on their portfolio with this, um, you know, this sort of animated uh, background occurring because it gives you a lot of customization options. There's several libraries to make it, you know, integrating these easy. Uh, but it's just so overdone. I'm done. I'm done seeing these. I, I don't want to see these anymore. And number 10, portfolio progress bars. I've mentioned this before. I think this is a trend. It's it's not a huge, it's, it's a trend kind of within our own industry when it comes to having your personal design portfolio. I think we're gonna see this go by the wayside just because I, I don't think it's a good idea to, to place uh, all of your skills and then logically speaking, one of them is gonna have to be the least amount of proficient in and then it's gonna make people wonder. It's like if you put... Like if you're 70% proficient at HTML and CSS, what does that mean? Does that mean you don't know how to do CSS animations or responsive design? So it, it's not a good way to list your skills. I wouldn't state your proficiency in your skills by a progress bar. I would just mention that you do understand HTML, CSS, logo design, WordPress, etc. Maybe you could put your experience in years with it, but I wouldn't put this rating where you say how bad you, or good you are. All right, and so that's basically it. I'm sure I missed like 50 of them. Let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, so once again, I hope you enjoyed this list. If you have anything else to add, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this, subscribe up. Check out designcourse.com, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Yay!